Hi, it's been quite a while since the last video, uh, so I thought I'd come back and uh, inform everybody what I've been doing. I haven't really done anything on the car itself, other than we're trying to develop a uh, business plan and pitch book for the next phase of the project, which we've decided to make the proof of concept a Bonneville Salt Flat race car, which uh, simplifies the production of the car as far as having to meet any kind of street legal tra crash test safety <coughs> standards and all that type of stuff to begin with. Plus, I don't need to build molds and uh, chassis jigs and all that. So uh, the proof of concept Bonneville Salt Flat race car will be a much quicker way of proving the uh, design architecture of the car and the benefits of its extreme aerodynamics. Plus, it gives me a, a way of comparing directly the uh, low drag coefficient front and uh, drag coefficient area of this car to the turbo sprint firefly that uh, the drivetrain is currently out of. Uh, because I have data showing the turbo sprint firefly does a top speed of 105 miles an hour and its coefficient of drag is 0 0.32. Now uh, we're estimating the coefficient of drag on this body is 0.16 so that will reduce the aerodynamic drag of the car by uh, uh, 50 percent and it will make the fuel mileage roughly 80 percent better so we'll find out when we get the car on the road so what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the Bonneville salt flats with the stock uh, factory OEM turbo three-cylinder five-speed transmission and run it uh, full out and see what it'll do. The challenge that we've set, uh, set up is 150 miles per gallon and 150 miles per hour. That's the goal that we're shooting for. Um, so uh, once we run the car with the stock OEM drivetrain, then I'm going to pull that engine out and put a modified Suzuki turbocharged three cylinder in there that's been boosted up a little bit more to go for the 150 miles an hour. Now the stock motor, well, on paper it should do about 127 miles an hour uh, due to the uh, reduction in aerodynamic drag compared to the stock car. So uh, that's a good starting point. Now we're going to pull that out and uh, run the boosted up engine and shoot for 150 miles per hour. And then once that's done, after the races are done at Bonneville, then we will uh, map out a, probably about a five mile oval and do laps until we run out of, until we run out of fuel. Now uh, the intention is to get 150 miles per gallon. Now that's achievable uh, using the horsepower overcome drag formulas that we have. Um, at 45 miles an hour, it should get close to 150 miles per gallon. Now uh, the car will get 90 miles per gallon at uh, 65 miles an hour cruising down the freeway. So, of course, these are all speculative uh, uh, situations that have been figured out on paper, but uh, the way to prove this is to take it to the salt flats, which is an extreme environment, and do the testing and then put the data in the, all the uh, equations and we can figure out everything exactly the way that it is. So now I've partnered with the uh, Illinois Business uh, Consulting University and they're building a uh, business plan and pitch book for me. Uh, so once that's done, we're going to use that to uh, uh, visit with uh, possible investors and partners that might want to help fund this project. Because <clears throat> the uh, Bonneville Salt Flat Proof of Concept car is approximately 195000 to complete, compared to the first street car would be about 395000 So there's a big savings by going to the salt flats, plus it's an extreme environment, so it's a good way of uh, showing what the car can do. I, I like to compare that to the uh, Automotive XPRIZE competition that was run uh, about a year and a half ago, where uh, a lot of the cars couldn't even do the 50 mile endurance test. They would break down and all this kind of stuff. So I thought, well, why don't we go to the extreme and take it to the salt flats, and uh, that would be a really good test to prove the car and we can learn and put the data in the equation and then build a very good street car or a do-it-yourself kit, whatever uh, happens to be uh, uh, coming along next. So that's basically uh, what I've been doing. So we're just been pushing pencils and paper around lately. Um, I've spent all my own personal money in the car that I can 
for a while, otherwise I'd have to put a third mortgage on my house. So um, once we get this uh, business plan and pitch book out there, um, then um, hopefully we can uh, round up some investors. So um, I think I'll uh, walk you, I'll walk over there, grab the camera and I'll show you the uh, rear seat area because I've had some comments from people saying, well how do you get four people in that car? I mean it looks pretty small. Well really there's a lot of room inside the back. So I'll walk the camera over here, you can see exactly what's going on and, uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks. So we're going to come into the rear seat area here. Now I'm going to, it's like, it'll be like a wraparound bench seat as you can see. I've got a, it's just a cardboard uh, uh, facsimile of what the seat is going to be looking like when it's upholstered, but gives you an idea. There's two seats there, so you'd be sitting shoulder to shoulder, but there's uh, lots of leg room as I swing around here. You'll see there's, uh, there's 10 inches of leg room between the uh, rear seat and the back of the front seat. Now the back of the front seat in this situation is set up for a driver who is six foot one tall so as you can see uh, there's lots of room there. Anyways, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the taillight uh, detail. I've got some taillight lens designs sort of roughed out in there. It gives you an idea what the taillights are going to look like. And uh, now there's been people asking me all sorts of questions about it. Like this, we used to be a three-wheeled car, but it is now going to have dual wheels in the back, as you can see from here. It's going to have independent swing axles, which will really enhance the ride and handling capabilities of the car, because I want to put uh, an interactive suspension system in it for the street car, for uh, slalom racing and stuff like that. Uh, anyways that is basically what what it looks like it like I say it hasn't really changed in the boat in about a year or so um, there's a lot of time and money that goes into this and unfortunately I'm just one guy trying to do this by himself right now and uh, uh, hopefully with the website and everything I can uh, round up some partners now, I've been to the salt flats numerous times. So these are just some of the t-shirts that I've got hanging on the wall here to, to show you. Now, um, this was back in 2002. And then this one here is from uh, 2003. And then this one here, when I went, I was on the crew for, of these of the guys with this car here on the very bottom, the original fast guys. It was a uh, uh, 420 cubic inch big block Chevy with uh, dual dominators on it that went, uh, uh, the year I was there, it went 249 miles an hour and set a record and then went back the following year and it went into the 250s and it holds a record there in that class. And uh, hopefully the Zolico can go there and uh, be the world's first car to do 150 miles an hour and get 150 miles per gallon. And I guess that's about the end of this video for now. Thank you.